It's day one of the Ekrams 2012 conference, and as you can see, it's already going strong. Researchers are conversing here, but they're also collaborating on a more global level. We had a chance to speak with some esteemed members of the MS community to hear more. Collaborative research is easier today than in years past because, of course, the international technology and the communications is much easier, but also there is a lot more awareness of the need to cooperate. They're beginning to understand that they complement each other so that they can see that physicists and radiologists and neurologists and psychologists all bring something to the party and actually if they work together they can address questions in a much more meaningful way and in a much more effective way. We're all working together on clinical trials, that's been really very, very important. And secondly, organizations like ECTRAMS, ACTRAMS, LACTRAMS, the MS International Federation, are bringing together people with common themes to focus on common questions and to try and resolve them. As questions get more and more complex, I think you, seem, you need to have more groups working together. People living with MS are not really interested in where the research comes from. They want a solution, they want a cure. Since I joined in the last few years, there have been a whole load of new drugs that have been coming on the market and in the pipeline. Timetables uh, are always very challenging and I you know, remember very well we talk about five-year time frame, ten-year time frame and in the end you can never really predict. However, if people will work together and won't duplicate, if we can build on each other's work, you, you, you reduce the timetable. We need to look at quality of life aspects and there's a lot of aspects there that we're learning a lot more when it comes to cognition, depression and just ensuring that they can have better quality of life. The first biggest challenge, obviously, is money. The pharmaceutical companies spend much more money, of course, than the charities do. But what the real crunch is, is to get the basic research which is done in research institutions, to get that bridged towards the pharmaceutical companies so that the treatments can be developed. Another great challenge that we have is to break down the silos that are currently there in research. Those living with MS, the academic researchers, and the pharmaceutical companies, and we all three need to work together to find that answer to a cure. We still know very little about this disease, so I think that's one challenge is really to understand the biology. I suppose the most important questions, the most important areas would be identifying targets in the lab that we can actually transform into treatments for patients, working out what we really mean by things like progression, which we can do in the lab, and actually then apply that to how we think about patients and manage patients. They're, they're two of, of, of the really key areas for that movement. meeting particularly, I, I've seen there's a lot of uh, new data coming out on epidemiology, research in this area in places like Iran, and I think that's going to help a lot in our understanding of how, how MS is moving. From my own perspective, looking as a charity at the global level, because we deal with all countries in the world, is to see uh, the progressive MS initiative taking place. The NMSS in America took a great initiative in bringing several societies together. We are now having quite a few scientists around the table, conferences uh, ahead. And what's really exciting is to see new, more effective treatments coming online and new concepts of management. So it's the whole person being managed with the treatments playing a key role. Tomorrow we'll be talking about progressive MS, how researchers are coming closer to understanding that type of MS and how that affects the people who live with it. See you then.